All right, so now that we have our first person mechanic working and the ability to shoot a projectile, what I want to do is create a essentially an enemy that has hit points and can take damage and explode. Uh, to give you an idea of what that will look like, I have this cube here that I can hit with a fireball and blow it up after it reaches zero life. So we're going to cover that right now. So first I'm going to delete the prefab I have here, show you how to do it from the ground up. So what I did up front was I went to game object and I hit 3D object and you make a cube. I'm going to scale the cube up a bit because it's pretty small by default. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. We have all the basic things on here such as the box collider, the mesh render and everything. But if I play this right now, even though it has a collider, you see this? It just floats in the air. I can hit it and everything but there's no physics or anything attached to it. And that's because there's no rigid body physics uh, property added to this object. So in order to make that happen, what we want to do is hit the add component button here uh, while we have our cube selected. And we want to go to physics and choose rigid body. And now what should happen is this should behave with gravity. And if I hit it, you should see it sort of roll around just rolled off the edge of the cliff and there it goes. So now what we want to do is whenever I shoot this box, we want it to be able to keep track of how much HP it has and we want it to be able to take damage according to the amount of damage our fireball outputs. So this is kind of a multi-step process. The first thing we want to do is tell our fireball how much damage it actually has. So if I look at my fireball 2 prefab your guys should just be called fireball um, you'll notice that i added a different script on here called fireball damage and all it has is a damage property so what we want to do uh, is create this script so just basically in here in your assets section you can right click and hit create uh, choose javascript and then just name it fireball damage for instance now if I go into mono develop, or sorry, you can double click on the script in your asset viewer to open it up in mono develop. And inside mono develop, if I look at this script, I've literally done nothing on it except specify a damage variable outside of all the functions. So at the top, it's just var, uh, var damage, which is an int variable, an integer variable. And the purpose of this is so that when you click on the fireball and you look under the fireball damage script, we can specify however much damage we want here. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna leave it at five, but you could put this at like 20 if you want, 30, 50, 7,000, whatever, whatever amount of damage you want. I'm just gonna put it at five. The reason we do this is because we're going to end up putting a health script on this cube here that is going to be able to determine what the damage property is of the object that's colliding with it, and then it will be able to subtract the damage from the overall health of the cube. So to give you an idea of how that script looks, if I look at my enemy cube prefab, which is not what this is here, I made this earlier, I have a health script and the health script has an HP value and an explosion attached to it. So this is the next step here is to create this script. So under your assets, we're gonna create another script. So you can right click in here and hit create choose JavaScript, and for this script, uh, just call it health. Health should be fine, health.js. Um, so then double click on the health script, and you'll see what I have here. Now, if you're gonna copy down what I have here, which I recommend for the sake of the tutorial, you don't have to copy any of these gray lines, uh, the ones with the two uh, forward slashes on them. Uh, in case you're new to programming, the double forward slash comments outline so that they're not read by the compiler. So if we take a look at this script, what we need to do first of all is specify a couple of things. First of all, we have an HP variable. And if I take a look again at my enemy cube object, we see here under the health script, we're able to specify HP. I'm going to start this guy off with 10 HP. Now, if we look at this second line, I have this method being called, uh, that's called invoke repeating. This is part of Unity's API. And what it's calling on is a method, a time amount, and then a, uh, a recurring time amount. So if we take a look at the API here, this is the actual function. Um, 
you'll see how they put the syntax out. There's a method name, which is a string value. There's a time, which is a float value. And then there's a repeat rate, which is also a float value. So if I break this down, the region method is something I create myself down here outside of the uh, update functions called region. And all this is doing is it's telling the HP value to equal HP plus five. This occurs, for, well, the, the effect occurs after three seconds and then every three seconds after that, it adds five to the HP value. So if I look at my health scripts, I start off at 10, but after three seconds, this is gonna jump up to 15. And then after another three seconds, it will jump up to 20. The only reason I'm doing this is to just add a little bit of flavor to the object so that over time it regenerates HP. There's really not much of a purpose to it for the scope of the tutorial. I just want to kind of show some of the things you can do uh, just with a little bit of programming. So that's how the invoke repeating function is working. Now, after that, I have an explosion game object. And if you remember, uh, from our destroy object script, which I have up here, we did the same thing for our projectile. Uh, we called on an explosion object that we could specify, and then we basically instantiate that explosion when we want the object to destroy itself, which you can see happening here in the actual bulk of the function update. So under the function update, um, we have an if statement that basically is all it's saying is if the HP of this object gets to zero, then we're going to create an explosion uh, of the explosion game object that we specify up here at the position and rotation of you know the game object in question which is going to be our cube and then we're going to destroy the game object so we're going to get a very similar uh similar result that we have with the projectile when the fireball hits something how it explodes it's going to be very similar to that except it's only going to happen when this box is hp equals zero uh, the last thing we have here on line 20 is another collision function as part of the Unity API, the onCollision enter. So this function is determining that when this cube is being collided with by another object. So what this line here is saying is if the fireball object is what is hitting the collider, then we're going to do something. We're going to um, subtract so much health from the object. What I want to talk about is kind of this string of information here. So collision.collider, if we look at the Unity API, this basically returns the collider that is interacting with the cube at the moment. And then by doing so, we're able to grab the game object from the collider, and we're able to grab the name of the game object, and we're able to determine what the name of the object is. So. We're basically saying if the name of the game object that is colliding with our box is Fireball 2 clone, then we're going to execute something. Now, if you've been following along on the tutorial, yours is probably just called Fireball clone, not Fireball 2. So keep that in mind. You might need to take the two out. But the important thing here is since we're using a string, you have to make sure the case and the spacing is all correct. I, I was trying this earlier and I had a lowercase c on the clone and it wasn't working. The moment I put it to uppercase, it worked. So it is case sensitive. Make sure you've got it all proper. The reason we say fireball clone is because if we play our game and I actually shoot my fireball, watch over here on the hierarchy, you'll notice when I shoot it turns into fireball to clone. Even though the, the prefab object is just called fireball 2, if you recall, our projectile script is instantiating a clone. So because of that, we have to make sure that the cube knows that we're colliding with a Fireball 2 clone and not just a Fireball 2 object. So now that we have this if statement determining uh, whether or not the Fireball is what's hitting our cube, now we have this uh, line here, which is basically telling the HP to be subtracted by the amount of damage that's specified on the fireball object. Now to get this, we used a similar uh, call here, or sorry, we used a similar call here that we sort of used here in the if statement. Basically what we're looking to do here is grab the damage component, sorry, grab the damage integer that is found within the fireball damage script component 
that is attached to the game object that is colliding with our cube. That is essentially what this line, this long line is doing. At the end of the day, this is returning a value of five. So we could uh, just as easily hard code this and say HP minus five. And by doing this, instead of just hard coding a value here that you can't really change dynamically, this gives you a little bit more flexibility uh, in how you return the damage value to this script so that we can subtract the HP appropriately. Now, the different element between this line and say this line is this get component function. So what this does is it looks at the game object that's being collided with on our cube. And it's saying that we wanna get a component that is part of that game object. So if we go into Unity, I look at my Fireball 2 component, or sorry, Fireball 2 prefab, one of our components, these are all components. It's like the transform, the rigid body, the sphere, the sphere collider, these are all components that includes the fireball damage script. So this is a component and this component has an integer attached to it called damage. So once we get this component, we are able to, we are able to call on the damage integer and return that value to our script. So if I were to dynamically change the damage here to 30, then this script, this line right here, is going to recognize that and it's going to say, oh, HP now equals HP minus 30 instead of 5. So that's the general idea behind the script. So once you have this in place, you want to go ahead and save it. So Control S, uh, likewise the Fireball Damage script, make sure you save it. You have to make sure you save your scripts when you make changes in Unity, otherwise they won't update within the Unity editor. So now we have all that in place, what we need to do is add that health script to our uh, to our cube here. So drag and drop the health script from down here in your assets. You can just drag it onto the cube if you want. You could drag it over here. You could drag it into the component list. It's going to drag it onto the cube in the hierarchy. So now we have a health script here. We can put the HP to, let's just say, 5. And then for explosion, if you recall, much like our uh, much like our fireball destroy object script where we gave it the detonator simple prefab from the detonator framework uh, we can give this another detonator prefab so i'm going to click on the detonator explosions framework and again if you don't have the detonator explosion framework go up to window go under asset store and do a search up here for detonator and it should be the first link detonator explosion framework by ben thrip uh, download and import this into your project. It's a really cool package full of really cool uh, explosions and scripts you can use for explosions. So under the detonator explosion framework in the assets area, go into prefab examples, and I grabbed this last one, the, the detonator-wide.prefab. Um, so make sure your cube is selected, and here in the explosion area, we're gonna drag and drop this prefab onto here where it says explosion. So now our script knows what explosion it's going to use when it instantiates that explosion, which again, we are calling under the if statement. So if our HP gets to zero, it is going to use this prefab to explode. So now if we play our game, we should see this in action. First of all, watch the HP. You see how it goes up to 10, now to 15, now to 20. I'm gonna pause one second. That is our invoke repeating function in action, which is calling on the region function, which is doing HP plus five every three seconds. So let me play again. Now watch the health. Once it goes to 10, I'm going to shoot the box. You see how it just went down by five? That's because it's grabbing the damage from our, from our projectile. Now if I hit it down to zero, we see that explodes and destroys itself from the hierarchy. And then the detonator prefab um, should disappear after seven seconds, I think, is the default. And I actually changed it um, by clicking on the prefab and going under the detonator script. And here it says destroy time. It's usually seven, I think, but I did five, so it doesn't last quite as long. So you can see how our damage is in action. So I want to talk about again this one line here, which is determining how much damage we're de we're uh, decreasing whenever the cube takes a hit from the fireball. 
So again, because this is dynamic and it's looking towards the damage variable, I can, for instance, click on my Fireball 2 object. Instead of 5, what if I put this, let's do 20, something drastic. And now select your cube 1 in your hierarchy so you can see the uh, elements here on the right. I'm going to wait till it's at 20. Now I hit the box once and it blows up. So instead of just doing 5 damage, now it's doing 20 damage because I specifically changed the damage element here on the Fireball Damage script. I'm going to put it back to 5 for now. So by attaching a rigid body to this cube, we were able to give it physics so that it can roll around and bounce depending on when we hit it, and where we hit it, and with how much force we hit it. And using our scripts, we were able to give this health that regenerates every three seconds at a rate of five and we're also able to blow it up when it reaches zero hp and dynamically take damage from our projectile so at this point we have pretty much all the basic elements that you would need to create a very very basic shooter of some kind uh, of course this is incredibly primitive it would take a lot more polishing and fine tuning to get something of what we would consider commercial quality, but the general idea is here. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk a bit about creating terrain as well as skyboxes and working a little bit with lighting and fog.